Hey guys, um, okay, I got my whole chicken here, and I'm going to show you how to cut up a whole chicken. Now, I'm having a little difficulty, as you can see, uh, getting the camera at the right angle, but I do have it on my chicken. <laughs> so that's what's important. So I'm just going to show you how to cut up a whole chicken. Now, um, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, when I was raising my family, uh, you couldn't go in the store and buy a chicken already cut up. They, they just didn't sell them that way. So, um, I mean, this might be for nothing, you know. I'm sure all of y'all can buy chicken pieces and a chicken already cut up. But I just um, want to show you how to cut up a chicken the old-fashioned way. So, I'm going to... I don't usually use a knife this big, but I'm going to try it. Because the only other size I have is the small one. So, um... What I usually do is just start cutting. <laughs> um, I usually just cut the wing off first. And you want to just be able to go through that joint right there. And then I cut the leg and the thigh off. And all you just go through this joint right right along there. You can feel it. I'm going to leave the skin on the chicken because uh, that's the way I like it. See, you just kind of cut through this joint right here. And you just kind of, you know, press your knife up and, and you'll get it eventually. I need to sharpen my knife. I may switch over to that small one. I think I will. And then you want to cut your leg from your thigh. So you just go up through this joint right here. Well, let me switch back, y'all. Now, I know all of my homesteaders out there who live on the farm, y'all know how to do this a lot better than I do because you raise your own chickens and and uh, you kill them and you cut them up and cook them. Okay, so we got that one done and let's cut this leg and this thigh off again. Of course, this isn't the perfect or the professional way. This is just the Glenda, Glenda Merle way. <clears throat> and it does get kind of difficult because you're going to have this chicken skin and everything slipping through your fingers and out of your hand. But the most important thing to remember is don't cut your fingers off. Now, I used to love the bat when I was a little girl, but it, it's really not something that I fool with um, frying and, and eating. I will freeze it and, um, and save it for some chicken stock or something. And then I, um, you want to get your, your breast out of here. So I usually just cut this part of the back off right, right about right in here. You can either go up with your knife or down. So you want to get your uh, your breast out of here. Let's see. Let's go on this side. Let's start right here in this area. And don't get your fingers up underneath there now. Okay, so I got that cut off. Yeah, you can leave the little bony parts in there or you can come over here and cut the little bony parts off. It's just however you prefer it. Now, Dorothy used to cut the pulley bone, but I've never done that. I don't really even know where it is. I think it might be this way some way or another, but that was always my favorite piece. They would let, Mom and Daddy would let Glenda Merle eat the pulley bone. And then you just want to kind of break this cartilage through here and and cut your breast in half. And just go down like that. Yeah. You can just kind of pull it apart then. 
you know, um, back in the 70s and 80s, when you bought a chicken, a whole chicken at the store, it usually weighed about three pounds. And they were about 49 cents a pound. So, you know, you could get a whole chicken for about $1.50. Now, if you want to, you can cut this big old breast in half. And I just kind of cut it right down through here. Just to, you know, because it, it's just too big. So, let's go ahead and, and cut this breast in half. And cutting through this bone is a little difficult, especially especially if you haven't sharpened your knife in a couple of years like me. Okay, I think I got it. But anyway, I was saying, you know, back in the day, chickens normally weighed um, three pounds. That was just a very good sized chicken. And oh, they would just fry up so crispy and delicious. But nowadays, you look, if you can find one, under five pounds because of all the hormones and antibiotics that that they feed the chickens to make them grow faster and bigger. Even though Jim Purdue swears there are no hormones or antibiotics ever, I do not believe him. <laughs> I just do not. Okay, so it's already clean. I don't have to clean it. But I am going to have to clean my hands. And then I'll show you how we, um, how we season chicken. This is just a basic Southern Mississippi fried chicken. Um, because, um, you know, when you grow up in the South and you live, sometimes we live, you know, 10, 15, 20 miles from the nearest grocery store. You can't just run into town and, and pick up, go pick up stuff that you need, like um, buttermilk and all that kind of stuff for your for your chicken dinner. You just got to use what you got on hand. So like I said, it's just a basic um, fried chicken. We're not going to dip it in buttermilk or dredge it in breadcrumbs or anything special. Um, I'm just going to dip it in a milk and egg batter. So, um, I'm just going to season it with salt and pepper because, like I said, when you live out in the country, you don't always have all, all of the, the seasonings that you need. Okay, so I'm on eight minutes. This is probably going to run longer than, than what I want it to, but I'll... I'll try to talk faster. <laughs> Y'all know that's impossible. Okay, so let me go ahead and start getting my oil. This is just regular vegetable oil. Now, you don't want to cook your chicken in, in olive oil. It's just not going to crisp up. And we don't want to cover it. We just want the chicken, the grease on the chicken about halfway of the size of the chicken. That's about how much? Probably, probably a cup. I reckon I should have measured it, but I didn't. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and just put salt and pepper on the chicken. Like I said, it's not going to be anything um, fancy. One of my subscribers was telling me when you handle meat, you got to have a, a wet hand and a dry hand. <laughs> So I'm going to try to follow his instructions. So, so let's just go ahead and put a lot of pepper on these pieces of chicken. I'm not wearing my apron today, y'all, because of the heat. It, I just don't need that extra layer of clothing. I know I probably do handle the chicken and then pick up my salt and pepper shakers, but I'm going to sterilize everything before I use it again. Okay, so you want to turn it over. 
I'm going to go ahead and start getting my oil hot. Those um, air fryers, have y'all ever cooked fried chicken in one of those? And um, how did it turn out? I got to use my dish rag, y'all. I can't keep wasting paper towels. That'll go in the wash, too. Anyway, how do you go ahead and um, prepare it with the, the flour and everything and then just set it in the air fryer? I don't know. Y'all, I haven't used my Instapot yet because um, I've just been too sick, y'all, with this um, asthmatic bronchitis. I, and, and now I'm taking the antibiotic and, you know, it really just drains you. Just have no energy. It's such a a horrible feeling. Oh, I'm hot. I have my sunflowers here. I'm so glad they had those this morning. Okay, so I have one egg and just um, probably a half a cup of milk. Now, if you have buttermilk, by all means, um, use it. And then I'm going to just put a little squirt of my Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Y'all know that's my secret ingredient for everything. Now, because I have it in my pantry, I'm going to add a little garlic powder and onion powder to the milk and egg batter. Or milk and egg mixture. But like I said, you know, I probably wouldn't have had this in my pantry back in the 60s and 70s. So, you can put whatever you want to in there. Um, paprika or whatever. But I, I think it's going to be seasoned enough with that little squirt of Lee and Perrin sauce. Okay, so what we're going to start doing is just uh, dredge it. I gotta drink some water, y'all. Okay, so you just want to, um, I think I'll start with the dark meat. I think it takes the dark meat a little bit longer to cook than the white meat. So you just want to dip it in your, um, in your milk and egg batter. And then lay it into your flour and just coat it in your flour. I know a lot of people put their flour in a plastic bag and do all that shaking and everything, and that's okay. You just um, you just prepare it however you, you want to, however you feel comfortable with it. And um, I did use self-rising flour only because um, I just have like a one pound bag that I had bought when I was at Jill's to make that um, uh, the peach cobbler. And a, a few of y'all have told me that you made it <laughs> and your kids ate every bit of it the first day. So that makes me happy. I'm, I'm real glad to hear that. Okay, so I can put, well, I better leave my flour out because I'm going to make homemade gravy in a few minutes. We're going to have rice and gravy, and we're going to have the, um, the corn on the cob that I bought at the farmer's market this morning. So what I did, I um, cut, the, cut the tops off and um, removed some of the outer layers of the husk, and I washed it. But then I dried it real good because you want your corn to roast in the oven and not steam. So I'm going to set the oven for 350 and then we will roast these two ears of corn for about 35 minutes. And I'm going to cook a pot of rice. I have two cups of water in my pot and I'm just going to sprinkle some salt in there. And when that comes to a boil, um, I'll add one cup of um, 
uncooked white rice. I am not an expert rice cooker, y'all. I have, <laughs> I have tried so many different ways. I even bought a emerald, I think it was an emerald rice cooker or some chef's name rice cooker and couldn't even cook it right with that darn thing. <laughs> now this little tiny kitchen, I just knocked over my sunflowers. I know I have a vase somewhere, but I can't find it. So I have them in my, the glass. It's okay. Let's see, I better use my rag. It wouldn't be a day in the kitchen, would it, without making a mess. That's okay. Us Southern girls, we just roll with the punches, don't we? So tomorrow, um, as long as I'm feeling well enough, we are going to have the drawing for the two five-pound bags of um, gummy bears and the drawing for the jar of olive oil. You want to just shake a little bit of, but look, see that coated pretty good. Just with the milk and egg and a little bit of just regular flour. So don't need all that fancy buttermilk and breadcrumbs and all that stuff. This is just a Southern Mississippi fried chicken recipe. People on YouTube are so funny. Um, there's this man in England that I followed for since the beginning of my channel, a good year and a half. Um, he's a chef, and he does a live stream once a week. And I, I have been faithful following his live stream, but then after my channel got grew so rapidly, I just couldn't keep up with it as, as often as I would have liked to have. Because I do enjoy watching him cook and everything. But then, um, about two months ago, when I was on his live stream, I wasn't able to leave a message. I mean, a comment. So, he thinks that I haven't been watching his channel. which is not true. I've been watching it. I just can't leave him a comment. So, um, before my Facebook account got hacked, um, I sent him a message on his, on his messenger on Facebook. I said, I, I just want you to know that I've been watching your live streams but for some reason or another I can't leave a comment but I didn't hear back from him so I guess he doesn't monitor his Facebook messages let's see if this grease is hot so I get a message from the little snob yesterday saying oh, we are unsubscribing you did not watch our videos anymore so we are taking out the dead wood <laughs> well that's okay with me because he just took the garbage out for me so long good riddance i mean why not leave me a comment and say is there some reason that we haven't heard from you lately are you sick has there been a death in the family no he's just going to get all puffy and Puffy and puffy and, and pissed off and everything because he thinks I'm just not watching him by choice. So, I didn't even respond to that. I just um, blocked his butt and deleted him. I don't have time for that crap. I only have time for you guys <laughs> and your sweet comments and answering all of them. 
y'all, I got the grease too hot. I might be in trouble here. <laughs> Maybe not. It sure is browning up good. Yeah, the grease is a little hot. Um, I don't have a food thermometer. I have a candy thermometer. I don't know if that would uh, tell me the temperature of the grease or not, but I'm sure there's a way to uh, to determine that. It'll cool down now with all those, those four pieces in there. Let me show y'all what it looks like when it's frying. It really, I probably should have put it in my big uh, stob cast iron cookware because it's deeper. You know, these pieces, like I said, they're, they're so big and so thick, they don't lay down in the grease. You know, those little three-pound chickens that we used to cook, they would just almost be covered in the grease. So you just want to let it cook at probably 10 or 15 minutes, and then we'll flip it over. So let me go ahead and put the um, corn. Let's check the time. 35 minutes. Okay. Oh, y'all, I hate being hot. I moved up here to get a get away from the heat and well a lot of reasons I moved up here mostly to be near my daughter but uh, also I was so tired of that heat in uh, Pensacola Florida I was glad to more than happy to move up here and get away from it But I, I know this 90 or 100 degree heat, it's just a heat wave, and I'm not the only one having to endure it right now. It's, it's like this across the country. Y'all, it's been a long time since I've been able to cook for y'all, and I just wanted to say thank you for being patient and waiting for me. It, it has been a rough year, y'all. Um, you know, I was struggling so so hard in January with uh, just trying to pay my bills and have enough uh, money for food and, and gas for my car. It was uh, a rough month. And then uh, my channel went viral in February. So I got a good uh, paycheck in March. So financially, my life has been much better. But then I've been dealing with um with illness, not severe illness. You know, I'm not I'm not complaining about it because it believe me, it could be much worse. And I know a lot of y'all are having to endure hardship and and health challenges. And for that, I'm so sorry. I just pray for all of y'all every day that God will keep you healthy and that he will provide for all of your needs. But um, anyway, with that trifecta that I had in the beginning of March, April, May, then I start getting a little bit better from that. And, um, and here I am with asthmatic bronchitis again. But luckily, you know, I caught it in time, and uh, it is getting better. Let me go ahead and flip it over. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. And like I said, I did have the grease just a, a tad bit too hot, so it got a little bit more brown than what I would have liked it to be. It 
It's a good thing I cut those big old breasts in half, y'all. <laughs> oh, Lord. That is so big. So, um, let's see if I can think of a story to tell y'all. Um, well, I have been trying to stay in chronological order, except for my, my nanny diaries and some of my stories about the, the caretaking and everything. I did, I did tell a lot of stories about, you know, the last 10 years. But I'm still going through my life married to John and, and raising the children and everything. So I think I left off about 1982 or 83 after Jill was born. And I told y'all that John had gotten this job with a medalizing company out of New York called Metco. And he had an excellent boss, Don. Don was the regional manager for the company, and he lived in Atlanta. And he and John just, they were perfect for each other. Now, John's drinking, it kind of, it did ease off a little bit. He wasn't going to the bars as much during this time. He, he was really working, and he was doing well. So there was a period between... Um, you know, that job, 1981, until about 1988, that he made good money, and um, I was able to, to stay, be a stay-at-home mom. Oh, and I love that. <laughs> that would be the ideal life for me, to just um, be able to stay at home and do all the cleaning and sewing and making clothes for your children and crocheting and being home when your kids got home from school and having a little snack for them. One of their favorite snacks was um, I would make these little celery sticks about, about two or three inches long and then I would fill it with peanut butter. Y'all, my kids never turned their nose up at anything. I mean, they... They would try anything and eat anything. So they would come home and I would make them those little celery sticks and everything. And they would eat those. And sometimes I would um, buy the little Debbie snack cakes. Mostly those little oatmeal pies. They love those. So to me, just being a, a mom and staying home and not having to get up and go to work and all of the stress and aggravation... Uh, trying to get the, I just remember when I was working, trying to get those three kids off to school and, and then get to work on time to punch a, a time clock. It's, it's very difficult. And I just want you moms out there to know how proud I am of you for your devotion and dedication to your family and to your job. It, um, it's, it's very difficult, and it causes a lot of stress. So anyway, John worked that job with Metco for about six years, and he did well because he and Don got along very well. Um, well, then Don decided to retire from Metco. He was old enough. He had put in enough years to where he could retire. So he bought a pest control company. In Atlanta. And he got the contract for the um I don't think it's called the Super Dome, but you know what I'm talking about. The the dome for the, the Atlanta The Atlanta Braves and um so he he was doing real well with his job. Well, then John got a new district manager. Well, this district manager did not take too lightly to, to John's drinking and him, um, you know, not showing up for work on time and not keeping the appointments like he was supposed to. So this went on for about a year, and, um, and then John eventually got fired from that good job. So that was devastating, y'all. It was really devastating. 
I know y'all can use tongs, but I'm not a tong person. I just, <laughs> like I said, I still cook the old-fashioned Mississippi way where you don't can't even afford tongs most of the time. I'm not bad-mouthing Mississippi, y'all, or the country folk or southerners, but I'm just saying the environment that I grew up in, you know, we didn't have any extra money, so we didn't have all these fancy utensils and tongs and all that kind of stuff. We were lucky to have a set of silverware. Not silverware, but, you know, the eating utensils, I guess. Let me see how my rice is looking. Oh, it needs to cook a few more minutes. My chicken is frying up real good. I'll let y'all take another look at it. It's a little little darker than what I would like, but um it's still gonna be good, y'all. It's fried chicken. You can't ruin fried chicken. So anyway, John John did get fired from that job. So he went probably about six months again without a job. I don't remember what I did. I probably, oh, I got a, a job as a secretary at a savings and loan company there in, in Covington. And that was when they first came out with the word processor. So my job before that, I had always used an old uh, electric typewriter, real similar to the one that I got out of the dumpster the other day, except it was electric instead of manual. So, um, trying to think, but I'm getting the timeline messed up. It's hard to remember, y'all. It's been 40 years. So, anyway, he got another job for another company out in, I think it's out in New York, too. It was called Eutectic. And, uh, they also manufacture and sell the um the metalizing equipment well that was in the 80s when the bottom fell out of the, the economy and uh, when opec was starting to produce oil and and putting all of the oil companies out of business in the united states so there was there was just no jobs in in louisiana in that part of the country in the you know, for John in the oil field industry, and he did look. I have to give him credit. He did really try to get a job because we wanted to keep our house there in Covington. We didn't want to lose it or sell it. So, um, that job was in, the location was in the, the tri-state area, was it was Tennessee, Virginia, and I guess Kentucky, that area, up around um, Oak Ridge, I think the Oak Ridge, the Department of Defense was one of John's customers, so, uh, you know, we had to try to find a place to live in, in Knoxville. So John and I got a babysitter for the kids, and we flew to Knoxville, and um, he had been there already and found a house to rent, and it was for rent in a town north of Knoxville called Maynardville, and it was way out in the country, in the valley. The house was right in the valley um, of the Smoky Mountains, and y'all, that was a gorgeous area. The house was beautiful. It was, um, it was a, a split level, because I remember when you walk in, you had to go upstairs or downstairs. So, uh, the company moved us. You know, they, um, they had a, a moving company come and packed up all of our stuff and everything, and so they moved us to Maynardville. And we got the children enrolled in a little 
um, elementary school there called Copper Ridge. But um, before we went, I had gotten sick. Now this is when all of my stress and nervous breakdowns and all of my mental problems really began to manifest. Um, but before we left, I had gone to several doctors and I, I was just so tired all the time. I had no energy. I was depressed. I just wanted to stay in bed all the time. Um, and I was having some pain in my lower belly. So I went to my gynecologist and he said, um, he ran some tests and he said, you have endometriosis. Y'all, I'm burning this chicken. I'm, I'm ashamed to turn it over. <laughs> he said, you have endometriosis. So of course he wanted to do a hysterectomy. And y'all know back then, we didn't question the doctors. We, we just did whatever they wanted to do to us. We went along with it. So, um, I went ahead and agreed to have the hysterectomy. So he did the hysterectomy, and um, he left my tubes, my ovarian tubes. Um, because I didn't want to go through instant menopause and all that, so, you know, we decided that he would leave my tubes, my ovaries. But after I had that surgery, y'all, I just got worse and worse. I mean, I was just so depressed. I, I just had trouble functioning, I had trouble thinking, and... It, it was just so hard, but I, I just, you know, I had three kids. I couldn't just go to bed and, and wallow in, in that depression and everything. <laughs> Y'all, this is some, some darn crispy chicken that burnt. <laughs> Y'all, I'm so hot, I can't even think straight. Oh, Lord, let me go in here where it's cool. I gotta cool off. So I got me a skillet full of burnt, ch burnt fried chicken. <laughs> it's okay. I'm gonna eat it anyway. So anyway, we we moved to Maynardville, and um, I had told John before we moved. I said, um, if we if we move to Knoxville, I'm gonna work for the TVA. <laughs> you know, but all I really knew about the TVA was um, was the song. I don't even remember who sang it, but um, she said something about it was something about working working for the TVA. So um, so we moved up there, and um, I actually got my first job at a chemical engineering company. I was the secretary there, so I worked there for about four months, and um, it was way out in West Knoxville, and of course we were still living in Maynardville. So so not only did I have to drive thirty miles just to get to, to Halls and Knoxville, but I had to drive out to West Knoxville. So, I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea to get in that little kitchen when it's 100 degrees outside. Ugh, I mean, my air conditioner is excellent, but it, it can't even keep up. Oh Lord, I'm so sweaty. So I decided I'm just gonna go downtown and, and apply for a job at the TVA. So I went down there to the towers and, and walked in there to the employment office and filled out an application for a secretary. And they hired me on the spot. <laughs> oh, Lord. I think I've had two job interviews in my whole life where I didn't get the job. <laughs> so I, I must put on a, a pretty good impression. But, um,. You know, they gave me tests, typing tests and all that, and I was typing, oh, a hundred words a minute, maybe more, with no no errors. I'm, I'm a very good typist. So I got the job, and they hired me to work in the, um, well, it was called the personnel office back then. They didn't call it human resources. But I was in charge of um, opening, opening up all of the, 
the, um, the resumes and applications for employment. And then, um, you know, they would go into a different department. But in the meantime, I would send out letters to them uh, stating, you know, we are in receipt of your application and it is in review and we'll get in touch with you if anything available you know is if anything becomes available that suits your qualifications so I did that job probably for about a year and um, it paid good I mean it wasn't extravagant it was just a little above minimum wage but it was it was the prestige of working for the Tennessee Valley Authority so then um, it was it was getting more and more difficult for me to commute so we started looking for a house to buy and that's when we found the house in halls and the um it's called the wolf lair subdivision so we bought a home there on san marcos drive and that's that's the home that i showed y'all um where we planted the weeping willow tree in the backyard for jeremy so oh you know, I really hate to keep you, so I'm going to go ahead and end this and upload it. And then um, I'm going to get in there and fry me a piece of chicken that ain't burnt. <laughs> and um, I'll probably record, I want to make some just regular old homemade brown gravy. So I'll record that, and then I'll eat my dinner. And then the second part of this, I'll, I'll have to upload it in the morning. It, it's going to take me probably a good three or four hours to, to get this uploaded. It, it takes a long time when you have this many gigabytes. But I appreciate y'all being here. Just know that I love you. Please give me a thumbs up and share my videos. And y'all just keep on coming back. Bye, guys.